In 2019, the NGF, Next Generation Fighter Prototype, was presented for the first time at the Paris Air Show. This is what the new 6th generation fighter will look like. Three countries are engaged in the development of the aircraft under the Future Combat Air System FCAS, program – France, Germany, and Spain. However, there is a dark cloud hanging over the project now – a Franco-German Future Combat Air System FCAS, to be or not to be. The problem lies in three dimensions – technical, legal, and ethical. The ethical aspect appear due to the strengthening of the role of artificial intelligence, and this is happening for the first time in the history of our civilization. The situation with the FCAS Joint European Program strongly resembles the past Franco-German project 40 years ago, when a common fourth-generation fighter was developed. We should recall that the parties did not agree on legal nuances then, and two European fighters, Rafael and Eurofighter, saw the light at the same time. It's true what they say, copyright will destroy European civilization. For example, Russia or China do not care who owns the copyright for this or that technology. They just use every chance they can to take advantage. For them, all means are good. A hacker attack, bribing or blackmailing a senior official, or the elimination of a key specialist. The future war in the sky is a war of communication, control, and guidance systems as well as robotic complexes. Artificial intelligence is at the center of this web. FCAS is a system of systems in which each component has network characteristics, but the main component is a superfighter with the latest weapons, hypersonic missiles, and a laser. But who will make the key decisions to use them? This question arose at the stage of the emergence of the idea. Participants of the FCAS program figured out how much they can trust artificial intelligence. It's no secret that artificial intelligence is much more effective than a person, not only in the speed of information processing, but also in decision-making. In the case with military equipment, this is the cornerstone. After all, we're talking about human lives. Artificial intelligence lacks empathy and emotion. For its algorithm, everyone is equal. And if there is a program for destruction, then the target will be destroyed. There is also a threat of a system error in identifying the target and making a decision to destroy it. In addition, communication channels are vulnerable. The development of electronic warfare systems, the task of which is to deprive unmanned systems of remote control, is one of the main directions of weapons developers. The enemy can interfere with the electronics and cause it to malfunction, with a laser for example. But even without interference from the enemy, the AI-controlled system looks quite unreliable. Imagine a situation where a flying drone is hunting for a conditional bin Laden. Loitering over villages in the mountains of Afghanistan, the drone scans the faces of the natives. Suddenly, it captures and recognizes the terrorist by the structure of the retina. To start the attack, it needs a split second, launch, and the guided projectile hits the target. Together with the terrorist, dozens of innocent people die, including children. If an operator was making a decision instead of the AI, he would have chosen a more appropriate moment to strike, for example, when there are no civilians near the target. So, the system that is being developed as part of the FCAS program is much larger than a single drone. In addition to the NGF strike fighter, the system includes several reconnaissance drones, cover combat drones armed with missiles of various calibers. In the future, satellites will also be included in the future combat air system. The exchange of information between the participants in the system occurs so quickly that a person is simply not able to control this process. Therefore, this role is assigned to AI. It is a huge question how secure this decision is. For example, during the exercises in Russia, a KA-52 helicopter with an activated smart fire control system accidentally captured a ground target with a radar and automatically fired two missiles at it. The target for the AI was a vehicle. Luckily, it was an empty military vehicle. The Russians, of course, were quick to declare that there were no casualties in the incident. However, there were people near the destroyed car. 
nobody knows what really happened to them. And the missiles with which the fighter is armed are capable of sending ship groups to the bottom and turning entire cities into a lifeless space. We should recall that the NGF is supposed to be given the ability to carry nuclear warheads. It's scary to guess what will happen if the AI makes a mistake. Therefore, the participants of the FCAS program initiated a discussion with the participation of the military and philosophers. Perhaps the last time philosophers consulted the military was in the time of Alexander the Great, Macedonia. It seems that the FCAS program is taking on a civilizational scale. The participants in the discussion face the task of finding out what depth to allow AI to control the process and what risks arise at different stages of decision-making. The only thing that the participants of the discussion came to was complete uncertainty. How realistic are the chances that the FCAS program will work and we will see a European sixth generation fighter? We suggest to leave the ethical issues to philosophers and to understand the technical side of the issue. So, Airbus, Thales Group, Indra Systemus, and Dassault Aviation are working on the FCAS. How will Airbus benefit the FCAS project? Obviously, under the FCAS program, Airbus is responsible for supporting infrastructure. These are tankers and transport aircraft. In this matter, they have no equal. The French company Thales Group specializes in the development of avionics and design of military equipment. For example, one of the projects of the Thales Group won the competition to design the appearance of the aircraft carrier of the future, Royal Navy. The Thales Group's most iconic project, however, is the Thales Watchkeeper WK-450 reconnaissance and targeting drone, powered by a Wankel rotary piston engine. The Watchkeeper proved its worth in Afghanistan, successfully supporting the U.S. Marine Corps in the fall of 2014. The Watchkeeper is currently in service with the Royal Air Force of Great Britain. The main task of the drone is aerial patrolling of water areas, coastal zones, and land areas. That is, in case of successful implementation of the FCAS, the Thales Group drones will accompany the sixth generation fighter in combat operations. Indra Systemus develops simulators, simulation and automated testing equipment, and electronic defense equipment. The entire preparatory stage associated with computer simulation of aircraft and virtual testing of the SCAS system rests on the shoulders of Indra Systemus. Lastly, it's Dassault Aviation's turn. Perhaps this is the most specialized company in the FCAS project. The guys know a thing or two about fighters. Their Dassault Rafale has been produced since 2001 and is in service with the Air Force and Navy of France, India, Egypt, and Qatar. To be honest, the aircraft's flight characteristics are not impressive. The maximum speed is less than Mach 2, and the threshold is 15,000 meters. The Dassault Rafale fighter's most remarkable advantage is its reliability. Only four incidents are known since the beginning of its operation. That is why India at one time preferred to buy French fourth-generation fighters instead of the Su-30 MKI. Where will Dassault Aviation get the resources for the new development? This information is not available yet, and the NGF model, which was presented at the exhibition in Paris, has nothing to do with a real flight prototype so far. Given that, it's doubtful that the sixth generation Dassault fighter will ever appear, especially after the representatives of the FCAS project announced that the promising aircraft is planned to be equipped with the Snecma M88 engines. We would like to ask, why not a Toyota Camry engine? We should recall that the Dassault Rafale fighters are equipped with the French Snecma M88 units. The capabilities of this power plant will severely limit the NGF designers. Or maybe Snecma engineers have the know-how with which you can get more thrust from the M88. This is where the Wankel rotary engine comes to mind. The fact is that 70 to 85% of the thrust on modern bypass turbofan jet engines is generated by the fan. The inner circuit is used only to drive auxiliary units. The turbine is a screw mounted on a shaft. The shaft rigidly connects the turbine to the compressors and the fan at the engine inlet. Thrust is produced when the jet stream from the turbine enters the nozzle. By changing the shape of the blades using a rotor or a reducer, it is possible to increase the pressure and get more thrust from the engine. 
It was impossible in the past due to the fact that fan blades, even made of heat-resistant steel, could not withstand high temperatures. But with the modern alloys and spraying, the temperature can be raised. The power grows along with the temperature. Voila! The French at Snecma are known to be testing this technology on the Dassault Rafale's M88 engine. Perhaps it is this know-how that the French keep secret and do not want to share with partners in the FCAS program. If that's the case, then we would like to advise the partners to come to an agreement as soon as possible. The FCAS program, or something similar, clearly has a perspective, and there is no doubt about its relevance. The whole world is following this direction. For example, the United States recently unveiled a prototype of the sixth generation fighter. A video about the promising American FAXX, which is being developed as part of the NGAD, Next Generation Air Dominance Program, Lockheed, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman Corporation are involved in this project, which indicates seriousness of intentions. There are competitors in Europe as well. We are talking about an alternative European project named Bay Systems Tempest. The UK, Sweden, and Italy are participating in the Bay Systems Tempest program. It's also about a super-intelligent AI system. A sixth-generation fighter will be the center of this system. The fighter's armament is corresponding hypersonic missiles and a directional laser cannon. Apparently, the laser will still be the main weapon against aircraft stuffed with electronics. The Team Tempest Consortium already includes more than 10 large development companies. It is planned to create about 60 prototypes of different types of aircraft. The plans are ambitious. It only remains to start and finish. However, as with the FCAS, the Bay Systems Tempest is still in the planning stage. Whose project will be the first? Having a competitive program should spur engineers to make discoveries. It only remains for us to closely follow the developments of mega projects, the NGAD, the Bay Systems Tempest, and the FCAS. Stay tuned.